yeah, you already know what the hell's going on here. Dimming switches. A very nice addition. You'll need some tools. Yeah, tools are good. Anyways, kill the breaker or else you'll kill yourself. Some people think that electrocution is part of the job, but it doesn't have to be. And although we've tested it and turned it on and off and it didn't light up, we're still gonna treat this thing as if Zeus himself lives in there until we can check that there's no electricity on any of the wires. Enter the multimeter. We're gonna turn it on and we're gonna set it to this wavy line here, which means surf's up, dude. Actually, that's alternating current. And we'll touch the probes to the screws and a known ground point to verify that there is a zero volts here. I've added electrical tape to one of the wires here because they're both colored red for some reason. The one with black tape being the supply line. In the event that there's no ground, you will have to add one. Adding a ground wire to an outlet box really only works if A, the outlet box is made out of metal, and B, the outlet box is connected via armored cable to your electrical panel. There has to be a ground path. You can't just plug it into a plastic box if you have older wiring. You can buy these ground pigtails from Home Depot, but trying to tap them into a junction box is a pain in the butt, as you can see from this time lapse. Next up, we'll be straightening those wires because we'll be using wire nuts to attach them to the dimming switch. Yes, the dimming switch comes with a bundle of wires here. And in this case, the white and red wire will need to be capped off because that's the wire we would use if this was a three-way switch. Otherwise, you would be connecting that wire to your runner wire. Now, we're gonna connect our wires up. So the red one is the line, or in other words, we'll be connecting it to the wire that leads directly to the light. And the black wire is gonna be connected to your supply line, which I put some tape around in this case. Last but not least, green to green, which is ground to ground. And now it's time to stuff 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. That's just how these things go. Luckily, these dimming switches are fairly shallow, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. And then you'll be screwing the switch to the box. I like to alternate tightening so that I don't put too much <laughs> stress on the screw. Throat got kind of dry. Don't forget your cover plate, but before that, if it's a special switch like one of these Lutrons, you may notice it has this extra switch, this little blue switch. That's for tuning your fader or your dimmer so that you don't have like a massive dead zone in how your light dims. So I tuned it so that pretty much in the lowest setting, the light is as dim as it goes. Once you're done with that, cover plate back on and enjoy your dimmable life. Fantastic. Thank you for watching. What the fuck keeps happening? Hey man, don't ruin my takes.